so what better person to talk security guard services and training than this man right here to my right, the CEO of CanCom Security, Ron Wells. This has been in your blood for as long as you can remember. Yeah, that's, uh, that's correct. I've, um, I've had security, uh, law enforcement, policing in my blood as, as far back as I can remember, uh, just hearing stories about my granddad. Um, and I think that kind of led, uh, led the way for me, yeah. was just yeah. hearing uh, stories about him and you know, what, uh, you know, what are these uh, stories about service and um, you know, what did that mean? And then hearing stories about when he comes back from the war, then he's enlisted as a, one of the first RCMP constables on a, on a First Nations reserve. Uh, and people still talk about it today. And uh, it's, it, it left a, la a lasting impression, you know, this idea of service. Um, There's no better feeling, is there, than helping out your fellow man in some way or another? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really Canadian. Like, how <laughs> a First Nations man, like, my granddad was a stud because, <laughs> uh, you know, you, you talk about a story. Here's a story of a guy that goes to war, uh, First World War, Second World War, because there's, you know, what else is there to do but, you know, help out your, your fellow mankind and fight the Nazis, mm -hmm. and then picks up a war bride and brings her back. Like, I can't imagine, what do you say to your commanding officer? Hey, can I bring her back with me? Like, <laughs> I, I, how did you do that, right? <laughs> Comes back, you know, and then, you know, 16 kids later. Like, Unbelievable. Jesus. Like, yeah. it's just, so, yeah. you know, if that doesn't uh, make you think about... Uh, how, what kind of spirit this guy had, yeah. you know, I, I remember him yeah. clearly, uh, you know, just images of him and, you know, actually meeting him yeah. uh, and, and the pictures. So I got these pictures of me and him and this chihuahua. And I still remember that time and space. Like when that picture was taken. Yeah. And, and the yeah. chihuahua, right? Like this, this, you know, <laughs> I remember this, this little dog that he had and it was a chihuahua. It was, it was crazy. But, um, yeah, you know, when you have that lineage in you and you, you grow up surrounded by that and mm -hmm. stories evolve out of it, um, you know, it, it, it leaves an impression. No doubt it does. And, and many aren't usually inspired until later in life. Well, this hit you. When Very you young. Were, when you were a young kid. Yeah, I mean, uh, I look at my daughter. She's 12. And, you know, I think... It, you know, you're a parent and a kid starts saying, you know, what do I want to do with my life? I already knew what I wanted to do. There was no question what I wanted to do. It was mm -hmm. just a matter of when, yeah. you know, so uh, that was an easy part for me. So let's, let's go back to the beginning of when you had this vision, you start this company. How small were you and how have you grown throughout the years? Well, everything, it starts off with an idea. Yeah. Right. And I was lucky to have a lot of mentors along the way, and I mean really great mentors. Uh, successful men and women in the business ranks in, in the GTA, respectful names, um, I don't need to mention, but uh, they taught me how valuable and invaluable an idea is. Ideas are ideas, but businesses make money. <laughs> so you can have an idea, but if you can turn that into a business, then talk to me. Um, mm. You know, other than that, it's just a box of soap and n nobody cares about it. Uh, a successful business will make money because it, it's got to it's got to self-sustain itself. Yes. You know, it's got to feed you. It's got to feed uh, the people around you. So starting off with just myself and my brother and my dad really is my dad was my first investor. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he believed in you. He saw something. He did. Had faith. He did. Uh, put, put, put his whole life on the line. Took his whole retirement and said, here, son, go make it happen. Like, oh, wow. So, you know, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure, right? Um, and, you know, I earned my dad's trust in the early years because, you know, if he, if he gave me a loan, he always knew I'd pay him back. So <laughs> I'd like to think my dad's been paid back three times by now because <laughs> we've succeeded. And, yeah. uh, you know, the other day we went out shopping. We got him a truck. Nice. And... Uh, without abating an eyelash, you know, here's the truck you always wanted and here you go, pop. Like it's, it's just, here's the keys. He must be super proud of what his son, I, I, sons have accomplished. For sure, 
uh, you know, my brother included. My brother's yeah. had my back the whole time. So yeah. that in itself, um, the lineage, and then the hardest working man I know is my dad. How could you fail? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How could you fail? That's a beautiful story, man. That yeah. just must inspire you on a daily basis. It's, all, it's all I think about. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, if, if I fail now, I'm a complete idiot. Oh. You know, I've come too far. Well, it looks like you're doing okay, Ron. I think I'm doing okay. <laughs> so, I mean, like, like I said, we started off with uh, yeah. just me and my brother. Yeah. The most frustrating first uh, few steps in business because I started off, resigned in the public sector. I remember getting my license, ready to go. And I went out, pitched, you know, the business to a few local businesses, Tim Hortons, Wendy's. Like, uh, we don't have any security problems here. But hey, can you scrub our floors and, you know, scrub our windows and will you give us a deal? And um, I did. I, I, you know, I was like, I needed money. I need yeah. to make income. Yeah. So first thing you know is we're out scrubbing windows and scrubbing floors. and Gaining their trust. Gaining yeah, their would. trust. And then yeah. that same client, about a year later, comes to me and says, hey, we got a problem at lunch hour. Can you help us with this lunch hour problem? Uh, you know, sk kids coming in at lunch hour. I'm like, finally, you know, our first client. Yeah, so this, that, yeah. uh, it was just actually me and my brother oh. uh, again. So two, two, two of us uh, grinding it out. Um, real frustrating in the beginning because, you know, you start off, you want to you do security and all of a sudden you're doing this general contracting and it's taking off more than the initial venture. Yes. Very frustrating. You know, so I think by year two, we had a half a million dollar revenue generating and general contracting, which I wanted nothing to do with. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, fast forward about three, four years later, finally security surpassed that. And then I ended up selling that other business. But that first business funded CanCom Security. So there's the humble beginnings, yeah. scrubbing floors and toilets and windows and doing everything else and line painting and snow removal uh, for... Tim Hortons, Wendy's, and McDonald's. And it's not saying no to those jobs that were offered to you, which made it all happen for you. Yeah, you know? and then we built that relation. That, that yeah. actually was my first uh, business um, teachings of how to interact, yes. create, uh, uh, negotiate with clients, um, come up with solutions for clients. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the answer was always yes to them. Yeah. You know, it's like, do you line paint? Absolutely. I never knew I had a line paint. So I went out and bought a line painter and off we went. So yeah. Yeah. that uh, that revenue was used to to um, fund CanCom. I knew yeah. we had something in common. I never said no to those jobs either. I would wrap up the cable. I would rewind whatever, the tapes. Yeah, right, whatever go, it takes. Whatever so it takes because you knew one in, day in you were In the trenches. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. uh, you know, people uh, on the sidelines that knew me best or, you know, from, from the past, um, we're very supportive. Like, you know what, sure. do this, continue, uh, keep moving forward. Um, you know, uh, some of the first business coaches I had were very, uh, again, very supportive, uh, guided me along the way, uh, told me things I didn't want to do. And uh, my investor finally one day, I guess through frustration, uh, growing pains with a new company said, you know, look, your business is a good business just to make income to support a family, but I'm out because, you know, you're really not a business. Okay. Oh man, did that fuel me? Oh yeah. I was upset. Yeah. But I think he said it on purpose. <laughs> to, to get that fire. <laughs> to under, get the, yeah, he, he yeah, knew yeah, it would yeah. stoke a fire in me. And, wow. um, here we are, you know, 14 years later, you know, uh, he's, he's still there on the sidelines cheering me on. Um, 14? and, and, Successful, you know, we're 14 years in the making. You know, so our 14th year, yeah, 2008. So and, and 1,400 employees up there. We're at 1,400 employees now. Wow. Yeah, uh, over 30 vehicles in our fleet. Um, wow. Office here, Toronto, Ottawa, opening in Calgary, BC, and eyes on the states already. And now, and we have a manufacturer, as we spoke about, eye tracks and uh, mm -hmm. another. Yeah. Uh, segment that we we had. Yes. And uh, we own and operate that, and they're developing here. Uh, our dev uh, department is here. Uh, you met with uh, Jason Taylor, developing uh, eye tracks. Well, no doubt, Ron, you're one of the most sought after uh, security companies out there. Uh, can come and um, 
let's let's break it down now. What what type of security guard services do you guys offer? Well, everything from you know uh, uniform guard services to plain clothes. So in the uniform side of things, you're looking at retail security, uh, which is, involves malls and stores, uh, residential security, which mm -hmm. is condos and uh, our mobile residential security side of things where we're uh, responding to home alarms that we've installed and monitored and provides uh, CCTV coverage of uh, embassies now. We're, embassies. Uh, we've got into embassies. Uh, mall security, as I said, uh, office towers and multiplex type of uh, facilities. So multiplex would be a facility that's got condos in it, commercial tower in it, a mall, uh, subway access. So, you know, they got a theater in there and live entertainment, everything yeah. that, you know, a city within a city type of thing. Well, it seems like it was a lot thrown on your plate in a short amount of time, but you were saying 14 years to build up to all this. You're an expert in all these fields. You're the one in charge. Um, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but what, what I've learned is, you know, you can't be a jack of all trades. Right. But what you can do is identify talent. Mm -hmm. So in that, in that case, I learned very early that, okay, I don't need to be an expert in canine. I don't need to be an expert in residential security. I'm well-rounded. I know what to look for. Um, I know how to build culture and building that culture, uh, we, we recruit to build on that culture. So it's not particularly a vote per mm -hmm. se when you have to come into, you know, uh, our office, uh, but, uh, it's, it's an introduction and we, uh, we scout very, very methodically for who the next individuals that we bring into our, our circle. You know, we take it very seriously. We take our culture very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, so in that case, you know, I, I know how to scout. I know, um, I, I do have a knack to identify personalities that are going to click gel. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I look for. And there's, I know there's some cases where I brought people in and people just go, why? Like, why would you bring him or her in? And then later it's like, okay, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I understand now. Because they're fulfilling a, a void that I see that you may not see. Uh, as CEO, I'm looking at the business at 500,000 feet as some of the individuals who care deeply about the business, you know, might be a manager or a director, are only looking at it from 50,000 square feet. Right. You know, so, uh, you know, that oversight is very important. Uh, building those relationships, building relationships with new clients, planting seeds, uh, very important. So when we recruit, I'm looking for talent, different areas of expertise to build our portfolio, build our roster. Basically, you're like the Wizard of Oz. This is Oz, yeah. you're the wizard, you're behind that I curtain. I am the, 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 the <laughs> architect behind CanCom, absolutely. And how important uh, is in-house training? Oh, it's There's that word again, training, training, training uh, for a security service like yours. It's everything. It is the, you can, you know, have the best cars, you can have the best uniforms, you can have yeah. the best branding. But if you don't have the individuals to fulfill those large shoes, you got nothing. Yeah. You got nothing. Um, and and then we pride ourselves on that. And again, the instructors that we have are all proven instructors in their areas of expertise. Firearms, right down to use of force, to de-escalation, verbal judo, if you want to call it. Uh, these are the individuals that we we look after, yeah. we look for, uh, to, to add to, uh, we, that have a proven, they've done it. Yeah. We're not just looking for instructors who can just rhyme off a recipe, out of a recipe book. Have you done it? Have you talked someone off the ledge? Have you talked someone down from, you know, harming someone else? Or, uh, you know, it, it, that's, that's what we're looking for yeah. because who else not better to, to teach that? Yeah, they've lived it. They've lived it. And, and, and you want your trainees that come in to hear it from the people that have lived it, that have experienced it. That's nothing better than that. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing yeah. better than that. You, you need that. And I can quite honestly say, as we grow across Canada, and we're, again, keeping eyes out for particular talent, individuals that have life experience, and not always necessarily in security, but prefer in security, but that bring those certain elements to the team, uh, we, we'll take a look at that individual deeply. It's an all-star team right there. We, we have an all-star yeah. team. I, I can say hands down, with, with, 
without a shadow of a doubt, God is my witness. We got the best team mm -hmm. there is in the industry, period. End of story. It's the only approach in business. You want the best of the best. And, yeah. th and that's why we're here. You know, we, we, we've put together these segments so that we can showcase the talent that we really have. Mm -hmm. And it's something to, um, and, and, and our, our advisories, our, you know, the individuals that advise our management team at a high level, mm -hmm. you can't get any better, you know. Retired General David Frazier, how, like how do you get any better than that? Like it just, it's hard to beat that. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to beat that. Let's talk about the uh, training and, and the development program that you've put together. What does that look like? Well, it's tiered. Uh, we've come up with a five tier system. So you, you have uh, tier one, uh, level one, two, uh, or what we call grade one, guard, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five. Mm -hmm. You can fast track that training, um, but within a five year period, you will be graded as a grade five guard, which would give you the opportunity to work various sites, uh, more challenging sites and locations like an embassy uh, where threat levels could be potentially higher, mm -hmm. but the stress levels are different in terms of, you know, attention to detail. You know, there's certain things you cannot let go of, you know, and, uh, being able to be switched on all the time. It's stressful. You know, look at your job. Yeah. You gotta be switched on whether yeah. you're having a good day or bad day. Yes. You know? Yes. And we all have bad days, we're human. Uh, again, uh, the guard has to be switched on. We gotta, you know, explain to them why. Empower them as to, you know, you're a very important individual. Yeah. You're not just a guard, don't, mm -hmm. you're very important. Mm -hmm. And here's why. And that empowerment goes a long way. I know we've spoken about this next one, uh, to an extent, but why in your mind is training of, of utmost importance? Training under stress, we always go back to uh, our habits. Mm. And training instills muscle memory and reaction. Well, we like to call it response. We don't want people reacting. We want them responding. So in a, in a very stressful situation, if they're reacting, we're failing. Yes. If they're responding, we're winning. And that's, you know, we're talking to General Frazier. Everything is, goes right back to training. Training is the, the soul of CANCOM security, heart and soul of CANCOM security and the success of our guard staff and the instructors that lead the way. You know, our instructors are tops. You don't get any better than our instructors. You've been doing this for years. Are you still training? I have no choice. I love it. I got a passion for it. You know, I'll, I'll get down and dirty with the recruits anytime, you know, and, uh, you know, I think it says a lot for the recruits to see, you know, the, the boss come in and, and participate. Yeah. Um, I like to come in and, and assist in teaching sometimes. But, you know, as the company grows, um, you know, I'm doing less and less of that because now it's, again, about the big picture and, and um, recruiting, a, 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 you know, a national team. You know, that, that's, yeah. you know, uh, a few God. things on your plate. Oh, yeah. yeah no, things. <laughs> I, you know, thank God, you know, yeah. like, wow, you know, dreams come true. I mean, I remember when I first started in the private security sector, I was so impressed with, uh, you know, the company that we were groomed and born and raised in, I would say, in the security industry. I was back at Intercon. I was so impressed with this organization. It was such a cloak and dagger, slick organization. I remember the day after I got hired and I walked out of there. I came down to the lobby and I looked up and I thought, one of these days, I'm going to have something like this. I, I said it out loud. Yeah. And then I forgot about it. I for completely forgot about it. So you talk about projection. That's crazy. Life goes on. Life goes on, and here we are. Back to you. Here we are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can we talk about the types of training uh, you use to employ? Um, the theories behind your training. Well, uh, here, here's everything is first theoretically based. Theory instill the theory so they understand it. Yeah. Then everything is stre stress induced. Um, we stress the candidates to recall information under stress. So they can recall information under stress, and we do it through repetition. Reps, reps, reps. It's just like going to the gym. Mm. You train a uh, mechanism of response over and over again through repetition. The, the greater, uh, greater uh, chance of success, 
you're not just not a, not a chance, you're guaranteeing success. Because if they succeed in training, you get them to the point where they're succeeding in training and the response is there, you got it. Yeah. You got them hooked, you're done, that's yeah. it. Let's and once they get out into the real world to perform it's what easy. they need to perform, it's a piece of it's cake. It's easy. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, here, here's, let's, let's put it in a, in, a, in a recruit's perspective. You know, you take somebody who's you know, fresh out of school, who's never, they don't have much life experience, and you put them in a stressful situation where they're expected to go enforce rules, regulations of the property that they're in charge to secure, be very stressful, intimidating for the very first time. It's like, well, I gotta go approach those 20 people who are not wearing masks in the food court and ask them to put their mask on. Mm. Guard walks over there, they're green, as we say in the industry, um, and the challenge is there. The, the ask is there, they ask politely, they do everything professionally, and they get, go fly a kite. Right, yeah. And it's like, ugh, they're deflated. Opposed to, you know what, sir, ma'am, and they stick to the program and they're firm and friendly, yes. as they're trained to do so under a stressful situation. I'm sorry you feel that way, but you still have to put your mask on. Yeah. And the resistance continues. I'm sorry, sir, ma'am, but you still have to put, and you know, that insistence, that firm stance, that posture, and then they get the response, then they go, okay, I can do this. Yeah. Um, over time, that's, that's what experience is either, for the difference between being an experienced guard mm -hmm. and somebody that's green mm -hmm. and, the t and the time. So when you get somebody in, in, in the classroom, in the training room that's doing repetitions and you're actually doing live dynamic simulation, you're, you're simulating those type of scenarios, those confrontations, it's not foreign to them now. It's like, okay, I potentially might be dealing with somebody who's disgruntled, had a bad day, who's going to be resisting you know, my requests uh, in, a, in a passive way. Um, okay, not my first time. I, I remember this in training. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and let's go down this path. I'm okay with that. And again, when you're firm and friendly and, and you have that approach, um, human nature and, and majority of people are good. People are good inside. Sure. You know, I really like yeah. to see the good in people. Yeah. Um, nobody wants to be that person who is completely rude to the guard. They don't want to be. Now, there's people capable of, depending on their day. Seen it, But yeah. the majority would be like, firm and friendly guard, okay, you know what? He's friendly. He's insistent. Yeah. He's professional. Okay. It's most Give definitely the, the right approach. Firm and friendly. The firm right and approach. friendly. And uh, it goes a long way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm about to sign up for your course. I want to be a security guard. Um, what can I expect? What am I getting myself into? I want it. I'm passionate about it. But is it for me? Well, right away, you will know if it's for you. Okay, right okay. away. Right away. I mean, on day one, um, we encourage anybody, all walks of life, to, um, to take part in security training because... The, the, the skill sets and the skills that you will learn uh, in this career path uh, will set you up for success in life, period. Because you're, you're problem solving yeah. all the time. You're de dealing with difficult people all the time. Yeah. Um, I, I've been told from day one, and, and you know, part of being successful in life is if you can deal with difficult people, you've, you're, you've half, you're, you're halfway <laughs> won the battle so in life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and that's, that's in relationships to, you know, your family, to your friends, to your marriage, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Yeah. Um, if you can deal with, you know, difficult situations and, and turn them into a positive, you know, you're halfway there. And that's what security is all about is taking good and turning, you know, bad, turning it into good. Yeah. Um, yeah. When, when you're confronted with, you know, some sort of situation that has been confrontational and turn it into a positive experience for everybody. And people will remember that. Mm -hmm. You know, if they remember you as that guard, that professional made them feel good about themselves that day, they'll never forget that. Yeah, they'll remember that they'll remember in the that. future. That sticks with them. Um, as a client, uh, what can clients expect from your company? Well, definitely a high level of professionalism, um, an account management team that cares, that is prompt. Uh, you'll never have to listen to our account management, any of our account management members come to you and say, how are things going? 
We already have our finger on the pulse. We know what's going on. Ron, absolutely amazing stuff. Thank you very much. This has been so interesting, and I can't wait to learn more about security on the next CanCom Talk.